<laughs> All right, back here in the newsroom. Uh, it was supposed to be a night out for family and friends at one of Arizona's premier golf destinations. But after a surprising addition to their dinner menu, two families say their kids had to be rushed to the hospital. Investigators say the ice cream they were served tested positive for THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. ABC 15 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski spoke exclusively with the families and has that story that's never been told until now. I thought my daughter was dying. It was just so awful. These two moms want accountability for what they were served. What investigators say they found in their children's ice cream. People should know about this. Seven-year-old Ripley, five-year-old Max. This isn't something that should be happening. They say it happened at one of the Valley's most prominent golf courses the night before New Year's Eve, almost exactly two years ago, inside this restaurant at Greyhawk Golf Club in North Scottsdale. Everybody was laughing, having a great time. The Bidner and Perrin families say they were enjoying a holiday dinner together at Isabella's Kitchen with stunning views of the McDowell Mountains. We watched the sunset. It was like a beautiful evening at a really nice restaurant. Jeannie Bidner captured these photos at the end of that evening. Their kids with big smiles and bowls full of gelato. Our older one, Ripley, she had thrown up all over the bed. Amy Perrin says later that night, her seven-year-old daughter Ripley started feeling sick. She just was really unresponsive. Her eyes were open, but she just wasn't there. Amy says they called 911 and paramedics rushed Ripley to the hospital. What do you think is going on? I thought it was food poisoning. But that would all change after the big nurse experience. I call 911 and I've never had a situation like that, you know, before. And Sorry. It's still hard for Jeannie to talk about. Max is completely unresponsive. I start smacking him. I'm sitting on top of him, shaking him, and he won't wake up. This is a photo of him passed out in the car, then on a stretcher. Her five-year-old son, Max, was admitted to the hospital the next day. Jeannie says doctors ran test after test, trying to figure out what was wrong. It just felt so helpless. I'm sitting in the hospital texting friends and family going, I don't know what's going on with Max. I think we're going to lose him. Hours later, she says the doctor came back with the surprising results. And he sat down, pulled up a chair. And he said, well, Max tested positive for marijuana. And I was like, how? I was with him all night. And he goes, I don't know, you tell me. And here's where both families started connecting the dots. Back to that vanilla gelato at Isabella's Kitchen. We figured out that it was the only thing that everybody who got sick had in common. It's this vanilla Italian ice cream ordered by two of their kids. Investigators say was laced with THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. Three scoop of gelato with every kid's meal. Little did they tell you that they're laced with marijuana. Gelato the drugs your children. It's outrageous. Michael Berg represents both families. He's now suing the company that owned the restaurant at the time of this incident and the company who made the gelato. They had all the responsibility. On top of everything else, according to the lawsuit, per the hospital's protocols, the Bidner parents were reported to the Arizona Department of Child Safety. It was like unbelievable. I just felt like I was in a, like an alternate universe. They could have had their children taken away. My husband called the police immediately. The Scottsdale police report says officers later learned three additional employees had also become ill after eating the gelato that same evening. Those employees said they were too high to drive and one was 13 weeks pregnant. During their investigation, officers collected three tubs of vanilla bean gelato as evidence from the restaurant. Lab results from the Arizona Department of Agriculture showed the gelato tested positive for THC. Somebody should be held accountable. So what kind of accountability has there been? Scottsdale police say officers didn't pursue charges because the employees at the restaurant did not intend to harm anyone, and it was done unknowingly. If you're the police and you investigate a situation where drugs were illegally given to children, then the person that, that did that <laughs> should be held accountable. As for the person who made the gelato laced with THC, according to the lawsuit, Heartbreak Creamery created and distributed the ice cream and did so without a proper license. There were so many points of failure. When we asked police about charges against the gelato owner, they pointed us to the health department. The health department pointed us back to police, saying an unlicensed facility infusing products with marijuana would be considered illegal and can be addressed by local police as any other illegal substance. I don't think that you should be able to drug someone's child and 
not have to pay some consequence. The Agriculture Department was the only agency who took action, according to this report, issuing a criminal citation to the gelato owner for operating without a proper dairy license. But to date, no government agency has handed out any consequence for serving children gelato infused with marijuana. Max still talks about the visions he had during that time. They just have this terrible black cloud over this experience. They haven't been held accountable yet. They have to be held accountable. So this never happens to anybody else. We made multiple attempts to reach the owner of the gelato company without any response. And here's another twist in this story. Greyhawk was sold to Arcus Golf earlier this year. The new owners called this a regrettable incident that happened before they took over, writing in a statement in part. At the time of the incident, the then owners immediately terminated the vendor and cooperated with all agencies doing the investigation. Since our purchase, we've made additional improvements in this area. We reached out to the former owners and they said they don't comment on pending litigation. When we went back to Scottsdale police about potential charges against the gelato owner, a spokeswoman didn't answer our questions and told us they had no additional information to add. We will continue our reporting. I'm investigator Jennifer Kowaleski, ABC 15, Arizona.